The Crit Show contains elements of horror, fantasy violence, and adult language. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Welcome to our season five Q and A. Oh uh, shoot! I know, right? We made it. We made it. Almost, <laughs> almost made it to a hundred episodes, but stopped just short. One of our favorite things is to stop just short of a number that you really want to. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into this, though, I do want to take this opportunity to thank the patrons who have joined us over like the last six or seven weeks. Because here's a little behind the scenes: we have been recording but not obviously the stuff you've heard. So I have mm-hmm. not had the chance to thank people. So Kitsy Cat, Rob Maurer, Tyler Youngquest, Sean O'Dell, Local X Savior, Russell Spry, Time Zombie, <laughs> Ashley Atfield, Sakura Drops, Jason Reed, Mary Bell, Grifter, Brian Sago, Alexander Williams, Samuel Hasty, Hal Boyce, V Mac Cool and Sean Drake. So thank you to everybody who joined us freshly on our Patreon in the months of June and July. And thank you to everybody who joins us just every month on Patreon. Uh, if you would like to join our Patreon, you can head over to patreon.com slash the crit show. For just one dollar, you get access to the most aggressively welcoming Discord on the internet. And really, like at least once a month, someone goes, Oh, you're not joking. No, we're not joking. No, it's harsh it's in a way it's it's abrasive overwhelming <laughs> it's, not, it's not abrasive um, <laughs> uh, and We're there's trying to sell people yeah on the and then there's there's it. hundreds of hours of content if you're done with the main show if you're caught up and you want something to binge there's so much good stuff there. there's so much so with that said let's get into the q a shall we so i'm gonna start off normally i try to put these questions like in the order that things happened but i'm gonna start with probably the most frequently asked question just to just to get it just to get it out there, because everybody's wondering. So here it is. It's a multi-part question. I'm so hyped for season six with TJ's return. When did you guys get things in order for such an epic return? Or what was the reaction at the table at that last part of the game? Or how long has this return been in the works? Those are all similar questions from different people. So the the short answer is that there wasn't a strong reaction around the table because everybody at the table knew. That's not something that... You didn't just, like, walk in the door at that last second. (laughs) That's that's not something that I would just spring on everybody. So everybody knew. It has been in the works since partway through season four, and then it solidified as to how it was going to work partway through season five. I'm not going to tell you now what that means, but I will tell you that the very beginning of season six, the first episode, starts with a cinematic scene that shows you exactly how he comes back. So you can look forward to that. Um, Is that question answered? I think. Yeah. The part that was a surprise to me, because you've floated the idea of TJ coming back in season six for a while now, but when we initially talked about it, or when you initially brought it up, it was TJ coming back like towards the end of season yes. six. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and so like that was the surprise element for me, the yes. thought that TJ was going to be in it for the full season. Yeah, so when I reached out to TJ, he actually had a, a decent number of Sundays off in a row. So season six is, is done. It is recorded, and we did it all like Santa Claus. We did it all in one night. We did it in a very <laughs> <laughs> period of time where TJ was here the whole time. Because he was available... It just made sense to to bring him in early so that they could deal with, well, I can't tell you what, I suppose, because you haven't heard it yet. <laughs> but there's a reason why we have him around a little longer than well, the initial idea was just bringing him back at the last moment. So we could deal with Jake's heel turn. Oh, I mean, I wasn't I supposed mean, to say uh... that. <laughs> next question. Next question. Next question. Was it always the plan ever since Urban Shadows to have Tass and Jake GM when in the worlds of Rapscallion and Cowboy World. And could you talk a little bit about the coordination to make that go off smoothly? Yes, it was always the plan. Um, Mm -hmm. It was an idea that I had had because I just thought it would be good for us to let our larger audience as a whole experience some other GMs depending on what we wanted to do, you know, moving into season seven. Um, And so I, I pitched this idea to them of, hey, what if you ran this system and then one of the NPCs could go along and 
we we found the games that we kind of liked for that and and went with it. As for how we kind of worked that out, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, mostly it was just, I think for each of you I had like two things. I was like, hey, here's a thing that needs to happen in this world, and here are a couple things not to forget. Other than that, I didn't know anything about the game or the world. Yeah, uh, yeah. In advance, there wasn't much to it. Like it was, I remember getting an email from you to both of us. Yeah, and just said, "All right, Tass, these two things, Jake, these two things." Yeah. Otherwise, go nuts. There were a couple times in the course of play for both of us that like somebody would ask something, and we'd kind of like look at you, and we'd have to have a moment of like, "Is that whose decision is true?" This? Yeah. <laughs> can we, yes. No. I think. We, yeah. Okay. We can go with that, yeah. and then make a decision in the moment. What were the two things? Oh, I forgot one of mine. He did. What? Oh, no, you did. <laughs> Do we have to re-record Amazing. season five? Uh-huh. Uh, so Taz, <laughs> Taz's thing was just that somewhere in the chaos of Rapscallion, I wanted to see like the wreckage or something of the spider people, that they had made it to this world and either had been defendant against or maybe had taken up a little part of the land just something to show that like oh yeah they're still out there and they're still working yep ah. and uh and i did discover how and why i forgot it and it's really stupid <laughs> so i'll just leave it at that um that it's a really stupid reason why i we we got most of the way through and i went oh no yeah and then jake's was was just that the Silver Cross existed. Yeah. Um, and that the Wraith was honed in on Megan. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to anybody else. And that whatever form that took, just that the Wraith needed to make an appearance and, and how fucking how Jake decided to deal with that with awesome, was awesome. I had nothing to do with that <laughs> other than the existence of, hey, there's a thing that's tracking down Megan. From one arachnophobe to another, thank you for excluding the spider people. Yeah. <laughs> Tess is like, yeah, I forgot, yeah, I forgot. to include what, them. what an oopsie I made. Uh, yeah, I will never not beat myself up for that. <laughs> During the pirate world arc, Landara reveals that in many worlds she has visited, Tass becomes evil in many of them. Was this an intentional reference to the history questions at the very beginning of the show, where Jake is the Divine's connection with Tass, is that he wants to keep him a good man. And if so, have you guys always planned on introducing this idea to the story? So that was something that I just came up with in the moment when we had learned that this world's Jake um, had died, and it was very much connected to Jake's playbook thing. Um, and it's something that kind of came up towards the end of a recording, and then at dinner, I checked in with Tass. I was like, hey, is this, is that, is that cool? He's like, yeah, fuck, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, it was not something that was planned to be introduced. It was just Tass presented that story. Um, I was just like, oh, this this makes sense. I think this is an interjection that Landara has an, an insight she can share. Jake slash Rev, can you talk a little bit about how they coordinated details when handing over the GM seat? Things like the magic circles, how Tass's playbook as the chosen translated into not fully dying, etc. Um, yeah, I mean, again, not a lot was set in stone. Yeah. Like the idea of there being the four circles in each world, like that was just, I mean, that's the point of going to them, but what was in them or where they were, like none of that was codified. Rev was just like, I don't want to know. Like yeah. I, I don't need to know. I need to play in this world. Yeah. Um, For Tass not fully dying, I mean, that wasn't like planned because Tass dying wasn't planned. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but it was just something that when like Tass died and it was like, uh, what's going to happen here? And we we're like, oh, wait, I suppose this should be true, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You guys knew way more about that than I did. I didn't know how any of this was going to work until we were recording. Like, I, I wasn't sure I was going to survive or not survive. I didn't survive. Come back. I didn't know I was going to come back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, death is so impermanent in most of these systems anyway. <laughs> and like, since we were doing Weird West had we not made the connection to how Tass's powers work in Monster of the Week, there would have been other ways to bring him back, I'm sure, that we just never had to dive into. But, you know, like big magic, just ritual existed in Cowboy World and it could do theoretically anything. So, Oh, boy, this is... Get get ready, Jake. This is about 17 questions. Okay. Um, 
Why did the spike originally form? Did Nash cause the whole geological disaster of this world? Was that a byproduct of corrupting the ley line? Did the corruption spread to other ley lines? Slash, were there other areas where people still existed that the people here were just unaware of? Feel free to answer none of these. I'm just really intrigued by the isolation of this area. <laughs> That was only four questions. Oh, okay. Maybe five if you count the slash. He's like, and I choose to answer none of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I will feel free to answer none of them. Thank you. Um, so the spike originally formed not because of Nash. Um, in, in my head, that was a, a a natural phenomenon. I get like just a bad thing that happened to happen to this world, but it exposed the core of the ley line, and that is sort of what drew Nash to it. So his involvement was not raising the spike, but his involvement was, oh, this disaster has befallen this world that I see, and I think I can get what I want out of it, so I'm going to go in there, manipulate it, and then come back when it's ripe for picking. As far as like other areas where people still existed, I didn't have any in mind. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the surface was indeed completely dead beyond what was on, on top of the anvil. I didn't like canonize that with the idea that if they had a really good idea or, you know, something that like they had a good hypothesis or some plan that led them to the surface, that it would still be open for there to be a secret pocket of civilization or something. Um, but since they never went down there and it didn't come up, as far as I was concerned, there was nothing down there. Uh, Jake, mechanically speaking, in Cowboy World, was Tass dead once the harm move resolved or did Kim technically have an opportunity to save his life. Overall, the harm move seems absolutely brutal in that game, and I have a ton of retroactive stress over how poorly some previous interactions could have gone. <laughs> I actually, this didn't make it into the edit, yeah. but like Tass was the only person who was trained in medical, so like to a certain extent, yes, Tass was mortally wounded and there was nothing that any of us could do. In character during that episode, I did make a role to try to like stabilize him and it failed. And we ended up walking that back because just from like a safety tool thing, it seemed really devastating to have Tass die because of like a failure that I made. Especially when he was set to die because of the ramification of his fail. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Like, a, I think a couple of times we did like, not I'm mean, sort of a rule bend of like allowing people to do some variation of medical without it being medical, but yeah. just like rolling that skill or you know something that allowed people to treat wounds without having medical and therefore without doing the quote unquote heal move. So yeah, like as as Kim said, since nobody else had medical, the only way to do the heal move is to have medical. So yeah, Tass was as good as dead. And yeah, we did that little rule bend. It failed, and then it was like. Well, fuck. It, Kim can't kill Tass. Like, yeah. that's so much yeah. worse. Yeah. I, I would have never in character recovered from that. Yeah. And so. I never would have in character forgiven you. So it's a yeah. good, <laughs> good thing. But also, like, it didn't feel like we were like, oh, well, let's change what happened since it would have continued that direction anyway. It yeah. was like, let's just make the circumstances not as devastating. The result's still going to be the same, yeah. but nobody else yeah. has to, like, suffer resulting trauma from it right yeah. like and we were really ultimately honoring the rules as written <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so. like, it, it felt different to be like you know it would have been one thing and not that we wouldn't have done it if it was like a horrible scenario but it would be one thing to be like oh well we did a th actual honest mechanic and it didn't go the way we want so now we're going to walk it back as opposed to well let's break the rules a little bit to see if we can save this character <laughs> oh well we've doomed them well, let's unbreak the rule then yeah. because yeah. they were doomed anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the harm move is fucking brutal. Yeah. Um, and like a lot, you know, Cowboy World at its base is not a fantastical game. Like, like yeah. we added the Weird West stuff to it and that makes it weirdly makes the stakes seem lower, I guess, because the fantastical exists and anything is possible. But like at its base, Cowboy World is fucking... 1800s America you t if you get shot or you stub your toe wrong you fucking die yeah <laughs> yeah so I you know a lot of the gameplay and a lot of the combat was like not just doing guns because guns in that game are very clear about this is what they do and they kill you and so we all kind of did like I'll do a magic shot instead or this thing yeah. does a yeah telekinesis or whatever to like 
be like, well, now we can abstract the results yeah. of this. We're not, yeah. we're not just committing dozens of murders. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to use telekinesis to throw these arrows. <laughs> <laughs> it is fortunate that no one else was ever like in risk of dying the way that Tass was. That's because we had Tass to heal. <laughs> I know, I know. But like Tass, Tass at least had some like fictional positioning of being like the chosen and yeah. like technically can't die. Like I don't yeah. know what would have happened if like Megan or I had Yeah, died. that was yeah. lucky that it was Tass, honestly. We yeah. were like, what would we do? Well, because there was, I don't remember what it was. Something changed the circumstance. There was one moment where I remember everyone at the table thought I was going to die. And I don't remember what happened. I don't like. But that, you, but do you remember that, that rings like, a bell? Oh, Rev is not going to make it out of here. I was thinking about that for you, and of course, when Kim got shot too, when there I were a couple of moments where stomach. I'm like, if I roll the wrong thing, I've killed Kim. Yeah, and yeah. there ain't no walking that back, you know. So don't worry, we all have retroactive stress about yeah. how these could have <laughs> yeah. gone as well. Yeah. Yeah. But again, like I was never terribly worried about it, remembering that ritual existed. Like I was not pulling punches on you guys because I was like, oh, even yeah. if somebody dies in here, just a move that can do anything exists and it could bring them back from the dead. And especially in this world where, especially after you had made friends with the God of death and stuff, like right. there were so many <laughs> narrative it, like ways into undoing a death that I personally, like I was making genuine calls. I'm like, I think this is lethal harm. I think this is non-lethal harm. And it just so happened that the non-lethal harms were the ones where you guys rolled bad. And so it went as bad as it could but it was non-lethal. Yeah. That was yeah. just, that was not like me pulling punches. It just happened to shake out that way. Yeah. I mean, I got into a lot of shootouts, but I think I only had the confidence to do that because I had a plus three and shoot. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, I took an ax to the chest. <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> Which in hindsight, having your gunslinger also be your medic is probably not a good <laughs> mix for that game. Oh, well. Were there any Omniverse parallels we didn't get to see in Cowboy World? There was... One, I went back through my notes earlier to remind myself of this because there was one that I like knew existed and there was one that I had in the pocket in case I saw an opportunity to use it. Um, the one that I knew existed was in the mine that you all completely bypassed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in that mine uh, was an empty man possessed by a demon and it was Jency, and Ooh. she was going to nice. be... Uh, pretending to be somebody trapped, a, a living person trapped down there named Colette. And she was going to try and tag along and she was going to try and sabotage you guys uh. and whatever. Um, so she just was down there <laughs> when it collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> She's down there feeling good. Like, I'm going to trap, I'm going to trick some people. I'm going to, why am I falling? Yep. Um, the other one that I just had in the pocket was uh, Peregrine K um, from oh. The Sprawl. I had as like a, a Cassidy Campbell, I think was the name I'd come up with, but like just a, a little bit of legend around her of like, you know, she's got like, she's like a bird of prey. Like she's like mm -hmm. a peregrine falcon. Um, and so that would be her nickname. Oh. And I was just kind of waiting for an opportunity to drop that one in. Like if you guys, you know, asked around a town and heard about some particular badass, like I was just like, all right, maybe at some point I'll find a place for mm. peregrine in here, but it never quite came to pass. Adding from Investigate the History, how was the pale stranger watching them from the spike? Yeah, that was something that Jake brought up on Investigate the History. I would love to hear you talk about this because you didn't give us an answer there really either. Um, yeah, so... Same here. <laughs> yes, for anybody who... Has, <laughs> again, I, I will honor the option to not answer. Um, for anybody who didn't happen to listen to that episode, yeah, I talked about how the Pale Stranger was keeping tabs on them the whole time from up top. Um, he saw them like arrive in the world. He saw the deeds they performed. He was psyched to finally show down with them. Um, and that was part of the attitude he had was like, he's watched and he's confident and he's observed you and like, ah, finally a worthy adversary. Um, how he was watching was the abilities he was sucking up from the scuttler, um, that the scuttler had like preternatural senses. The scuttler could smell things, see things, hear things, uh, observe across like, you know, like when Kim used magic to like vision it and it caught that the scuttler had preternatural abilities to sense things going on around the pale stranger was copying abilities from the scuttler so he had just basically legolas eyes like he could just mm. look down over the edge and optical zoom times a million and see exactly what was going on and like you know hear what was going on um which again like i i talked in that episode a little bit about how 
the pale stranger just being lucky, like how I tried to utilize that ability without it feeling shitty for you guys. And it was just that if you guys got a mixed or a fail, it kind of went as well as possible. It, it benefited him rather than just hurting you. Um, that that was kind of going to tie into also like if it came up, some of the circumstances of why things f- broke so perfectly in his way was because he has incredibly like extra sensory perception and is taking in things that you don't realize or to a degree that you don't realize. But again, that one just never really came up. Ah, uh, so it, it just seemed like he was lucky, but there were just so many like No, he he was indeed lucky. That oh. was that was the thing that the pale stranger brought. That was his inherent ability. Oh. Um, that he had like an unbelievable, a supernatural luck to him. Um but just like had there been a particular type of digging into how he was doing what he was doing, like there would have been an opportunity to glean. You can tell that he is sensing things incredibly well. Like it was a boon. It was not a replacement for his luck, but it was a boon to his luck. Yeah. Gotcha. And I, I think the example you used on Investigate the History was the the wave of bones that he then just walked up. Yeah, that like when the when the wave of bones washed in towards him and you know he just managed to like ride it perfectly like he was floating on top. Like that was just you know, it could have just dropped limply in front of him or whatever, but like it gave him a nice little position and a little bit of movement forward because it went as well as it could for him because he was fucking lucky as hell. Yeah. Nice. Watch him watching us is super creepy. Like that whole time. <laughs> yeah. I don't, um, I don't understand how we could have ever like known that, but knowing it now even is creepy. I, yeah. I mean, again, I'm not sure how you would have known it. Yeah. Um, I, like, I think that there are ways, <laughs> there was no reason for you to ask the question, you know, like, cause it, it never, even came around to like trying to figure out what exactly was up there. Yeah. And you know, nobody in this world, save like maybe one person, had any fucking idea. Um, I have mentioned this off mic at some point, but like, you know, a, a couple of it's rare that I think of ways that I think you'll solve things, but like one of the ways I thought you guys might solve like the big Nazca line circle on the side of the mountain was like one of the weird effects was communicate with a bird. Like communicate mm. with a raven, and I was like, "Ooh, maybe they'll communicate with a raven and send it out there to observe for them, and like, you know, use their combined magics to see through its eyes or whatever." Like, similarly, something could have maybe flown up and observed. Mm-hmm. You know, like if early on, if you guys have been like, "We really want to fucking know what's up there," and you flew a bird up there and got eyes on him, you yeah. might have seen, and he seems to be observing you back or yeah. something like that. Um, but yeah, just there, there never really came about a reason to ask or a reason to to check. All right, let's get to the important questions. Yeah, sorry. On to the important business. Did blueberry milk turn into a wheel? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I would. I think no. I I think blueberry milk stayed a horse. I love both options. Honestly, like I love that he gets to live a horse life, but I also love the idea of there just being this tire, like on a wall with a plaque <laughs> that just outlives everybody there, and it just becomes like. This legend, and he like lives on that way. I think for now it's just Schrodering's horse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he might be a real horse. He might be a tire. My my reasoning for staying a horse, which is not just because I want to make Megan happy and is totally steeped in logic, sure. and, and everything, yeah. <laughs> yeah. is that things that went into that world they changed by nature of having to change to go into the world. Yeah. So just because all the other parts left the world, I don't I don't think that thing would revert. It's like it's a thing that couldn't exist in this world that's why it had to shift yeah when you went through yeah so i think blueberry milk stayed a horse i think then on the opposite side of that to me it's just hilarious if we all pass through and just bonk <laughs> just bonk, the, just, just instantly just, just a tire thumps to the ground it, it thumps to the ground it starts rolling slowly towards the edge of the anvil <laughs> <laughs> nobody can stop it and just just for cast to be like well, that's a hell of a thing <laughs> What was Baba Yaga up to in all three of the worlds we went to this season? Oh boy, I'll I'll tell you what, from my perspective, um I didn't I just skimmed these questions. Mm-hmm. Um so I have to I have to answer the thing I said that I wasn't gonna answer uh a few Cass, minutes ago. This is where you say I'll go last. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, then... no, I know the answer. I just don't want to answer the stupid thing I did. Um so <laughs> well, we're kinda getting we're kinda us. getting two answers now. Yeah. Excellent. Um you thought you could hide from us. So <laughs> 
<laughs> so when I when I started laying out the the circles and everything, I thought, oh, I th- I think I know what I'm going to do. I want Baba Yaga to be one of one of the the people here, and I kind of envisioned her as kind of like an Ursula esque oh, sea witch, yes. right? But with the idea that some of the spider people had started coming through, and she was just like, no, no. And just kind of took them over and took over their drone type of status. And just anyone that came through, she's just like, okay, well, that's mine now. Keep on sending them. Do it. That's fine. I need more. I want more armies. And so she would have had these like ships of some of them like manning these ships and defending her area. But then as I kept writing and like deciding what I wanted things to be and other nods to stuff, like I couldn't, I was like, she's too strong. Like, I don't want her to be a boss. Like, I don't want to set up and make the decision of like what, how powerful are the Baba Yagas because then that might inform our worlds and a few other things. So I was like, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to save the spider people and have somebody else do that and forgot and <laughs> <laughs> set up other things yeah. and didn't realize it until far, far too late. So the answer is nothing is what Baba Yaga was doing. Yeah. yeah Living yeah. her best life. She was, yeah, yeah she's a, just being a sea witch. Chilling, being a sea Stealing witch. Stealing voices. Yeah. Uh. Always a feminist icon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think I've I've mentioned this before. I, I've at least mentioned it to you all, if not on mic. Um, but Baba Yaga was on an asteroid, and that she was kind of like a world killer asteroid that had like a bunch of organisms on it. Um, and I had marked how many failed rolls it would take to bring Baba Yaga to that planet, and you guys, <laughs> you guys left before it, what you were one away. Ooh. Uh, but she was going to impact that planet, and just all of these little things were going to spread out from it, and she was at the core of that asteroid. Cool. Nice. Um, in Cowboy World, Baba Yaga was uh, stirring a cauldron and feeding you guys rhyming hints about dangers <laughs> yeah! nearby. Oh, Rickets! Yeah. Also a feminist icon. Yeah. Are you telling me that I was manhandling Baba Yaga that whole time? Yes. <laughs> oh no. Uh, and that And in, they all remember. <laughs> in in that moment where like the second time you saw or the third time you saw Ricketts whenever that you were like, How'd you get ahead of us? And Ricketts just kinda like grinned at you that you could have pushed a little bit more and maybe learned that Ricketts was Yaga, but you just went, Nah, I love that about you. Uh, and then like <laughs> moved on. We sure did. I- <laughs> never realized nope same. and i was no fine was he with was him he just riding being... his cauldron through the air <laughs> um i i was like the mortar and pestle i was picturing <laughs> that um his little lean to had legs no. buried in the dirt <laughs> that, oh, that he would oh hop aboard gosh. it and it would run him elsewhere nice. oh my god literally L- little roadrunner legs i wouldn't have even well done this this is a nice lovely little surprise and shock to me i appreciate that now I'm just imagining him smiling at us with like metal teeth. Oh my god. Rev, that's, that's me. you. It is me. Uh if you were going to do solo mysteries for the others that didn't have solo arcs, what do you think would fit them or what would they view as their dream solo mystery arc uh if they were ever thinking about getting one? Okay, so this is what do I think specifically for Megan and Kim, like what would I put you through? And then what would you want to be put through on a solo arc since you gotcha. didn't have one while other folks were in another world? So for Kim, it would have been something involving her switching places with one of her alternate selves. <gasps> since Dope. that is that fail result, I like the idea Ooh. of her body swapping in another universe with another Kim and and solving a problem that like leaves that other maybe that other body had had been you know poisoned or something so that that consciousness that came through here is the reason that her body here is still kind of null and void and not active Mm. for megan the thing that i really wanted to do and i never found a way to do it was to put megan in the future that grandpa nash came back from for megan to experience that utopia and then know that the downfall of it was coming, and like, what would she do about that? Oh, interesting, spooky. Yeah. So one was a one was a time jump, and one was a universe jump. If if they had had solo arcs. Ah, oh, that's so cool. And the other half of the question is, can you improve upon the idea that I just gave you? It says or. It, you already or. did one, so <laughs> I'm. I, yeah, my pitch was gonna be like speed dating. <laughs> <laughs> just I would have just had a nap. Uh, if you had to do one more world what would the system be Power Rangers Rev just put his head down on the table (laughs) it's because I had an idea that I didn't follow through on 
and I'm going to I'm going to cut this probably saying this because I still have the opportunity to do it. We'll bleep it. Oh my gosh. I know. Part of this Q&A is going to be bleeped probably because it's not going to make sense because it's going to be about <laughs> season six. And so you're going to be like, well, yeah. that wasn't really an answer. But I'm keeping this in because that's my prerogative at this moment. Do not forget to, bleep to go this. back and bleep yeah. this. <laughs> I've always had the theory that when they traveled to a world, if they drastically changed that world and a bunch of time passed, that world would change game systems if the magic in the world changed. Because for me, that's what determined the game system was how powerful the magic was in that world. So here's where it's all going to be bleeped out, and you'll have context for this in a couple of months. <laughs> but there is a point where... And I was thinking about... <gasps> Dope! Whoa. I'm so here for it. Because it is your... Yeah. But I think it could still work. And at least the versions of it that I've played. And that's really what we want. So I might still do that. This is all get probably getting cut, but I just had to share this idea with all of you because that's it's so been cool. in my brain for like the last two two weeks. Um, so now for the answer that I can keep unbleeped. Um, I don't think I really have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'd, I'd always had the idea that I, I wished we could go into uh, Apocalypse World because it's the first one. But... Just the the mechanics of it and a lot of the moves based around, like, sex and stuff never really vibed with any of the things we were trying to do. So, actually... Uh, well, actually, I was very I much about very the, much sex stuff. By the sex moves. Uh, so, there actually is a version of Apocalypse World that is considered, like, an improvement upon the original one that's, like, a pretty big redesign Yeah. Uh, called Apocalypse World Burned Over. Uh, and it specifically lists suitable for play across wider age groups and more general audiences. No sex moves, a more reined in take on violence, less adult horror in the grotesque. Oh. In many ways, if we were to create Apocalypse World today, Burned Over is the game we'd create. So it's still the same creators. Yeah. Well, then that's my answer. Apocalypse World Burned Over. Nice. Nice. Remember when we were going to maybe go to the far future of the sprawl and it was going to be Apocalypse World? Yep. <laughs> what do you think TJ would have been in the worlds he missed? A thorn in my side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know for sure the answer in Rapscallion, actually. Oh, yeah. Tell us. Uh, this was a this was another kind of like quick start playbook that I don't think actually has made it into like published Rapscallion, but similar to Jake playing the ship rat, uh, there was a like surgeon character Ooh. who uh, kind of who had a playbook move called surgery, where if you performed surgery on a willing patient, you could give them like weird bonuses, which included things like a weapon arm or like a monster uh, organ. And I was like, yeah. that's very TJ. Um, I was thinking like way back when, was it called the gunslinger still? Or what What, what was it called when there, one of the playbooks was geared towards... Becoming a like becoming a lycanthrope, like turning into a werewolf that was and stuff. Gunslinger. It yeah. was gunslinger. Yeah. So I mean, obviously that was sort of much different and yeah. changed, but I, I had that in mind for him, um, just by virtue of the of the werewolfy stuff. I feel like in Cowboy World he would have been a snake oil salesman. <laughs> like he really could have that generated been like a slick. So good. Yeah. yeah, I think like Starhold maybe like the augmented the person who's like just kind of out, uh, out of touch and on a just a slightly different wavelength of everything. That is maybe the best description of <laughs> TJ I've ever heard. Rev, this long into GMing Monster of the Week, I'm curious how deliberate you still are about using named keeper moves versus just having a feel for what makes sense narratively and fits within the rules and spirit of the game. Name me five keeper moves. Right yeah, now, right. <laughs> um, so I, I've been, I've actually been thinking about this question because I, I am absolutely going with the spirit of the game and what's at the table. I would actually be really interested at some point in the future of running another Monster of the Week game that's very tonally different, where I use the hard moves and especially use the harm moves every time. And, like, monsters are monsters in this. They are not, unless you have those moves, you cannot communicate with them. Like, making just a very different style game to see how it plays in that other version of, of Monster of the Week. Much more horror yeah. based. And like, because I mean, every time you get hit, you're supposed to like drop your weapon, which is stuff that I never, I never did the harm moves. Yeah. Because they just seemed so punishing. 
and they are. So I would love to try a version of of that. Nice. Um, oh, I, I'm getting the long ones. Um, maybe more of an end of series question, depending on what comes up in the final season. But I have a question about the spider people. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Just forget about them. You guys are making fun of me. Uh, who invaded Elnor? Yeah, we know who they are. Yeah, uh, and, o- and only that one place. As. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm going home <laughs> delete all of my lines from season six <laughs> I quit <laughs> oh fuck you guys oh, shit. God. oh Oh my god oh let's hear the rest of this book of a question you Uh sons of bitches okay Um, (laughs) as far as we know nash is not aware of them neither is cotton or anyone else um (laughs) and they are unaware of nash how would an encounter between them and nash go presumably nash would still see them as a threat uh would he try to broker an agreement um use them as a tool simply wipe them out, etc. I think he would probably try to broker an agreement, but you know, we don't know a ton about um the spider people, but the queens do not like they don't work with other people. Like that is just not in the way that Nash is is sly and works with other versions of himself or other people to get them to do the things that he needs, that's unnecessary in the mind of whoever the spider queen is. They only need themselves, their drones, their population. Um, so it would have been a it would have been an all out battle between the two groups. Nice. God, I wish we could have seen some of that. I know. Um, <laughs> Rev, how fleshed out is your multiverse slash omniverse? Is it the kind of thing where there are infinite worlds out there where every possible outcome has occurred, or do all the different branches of reality have significant differences, or is it maybe even finite? The part actually that I cut out of this question uh, was just the person kind of talking. They said like, or maybe it doesn't matter. You can say that too. It's as big as, as it needs to be. Like, I have a ton of other thoughts of, oh, here are changes that have happened in these in these other worlds. Um, I don't think it's finite. I think that all major decisions, like all big important moments, happen the other direction in another world. Like that, that there are those versions of it. Um, but yeah, like I don't I don't have a I don't have a good clear answer for this, just that it is it is it is not finite. I mean it's Omni. Yeah. It's all, it's it's everything. Yeah. I think just, we'll never see a bunch of them where the differences are irrelevant yeah. and boring. Yeah. It's like, what about the day that Tass had a ham sandwich instead of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? <laughs> it's like, well, everything else shook out exactly the same, so. Except for he turned into a were pig. Yeah. Oh, huh. nice. Was there any point this season that you considered changing playbooks in the main universe? Obviously, besides the changes that actually happened. God, I don't feel like we were there long enough this season to yeah. have a need or want to, at least not you know, for myself. Yeah, and really everybody has a role, so changing of playbooks would have took to a like reconfiguring of the plan. Yeah. We're rewriting Rev's whole mythology if we change playbooks. <laughs> right. <laughs> or you're just having to find a replacement for yourself in the events to come. True. Yeah. Who wants to do that this far in? <laughs> <laughs> we had High Fantasy. Cyberpunk, Monster World, Horror Sci-Fi, Pirates, and Cowboys. If you were to pick another world to visit just by its theme and not by available rule sets, what would you pick? I want something with dinosaurs, like people riding dinosaurs. Like I want there to be a TTRPG that's Ark, like the video game Ark. Uh, I would have loved it if we went to like a uh, animal world, like we were we were animals. Ooh, yeah. Uh, something that was like courtly intrigue, like being like spies and going to like masked balls and things like that. I would really like, like trying to like plot like an assassination would be cool. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, superheroes would have been neat. We already mm. did superheroes, yeah. but I think it would have been cool and like fit fun with the other things we did with yeah. the other places we went. Nice. Um, I think like the opposite direction of that, <laughs> a- <laughs> Something that fucking no, sucks. Underpowered. Yeah. <laughs> like trench warfare. Ooh. Like World oh. War One. like in the mud, four of you just trying to survive and get to a location and do a thing, like where just the environment is super dangerous and, and destructive. 
the kind of thing where your playbook is less gout than the others. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's not no gout. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. nobody's not no gout. No, no, no. Uh, my special ability is <laughs> I only have one trench foot. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite new NPC this season? Oh, man. Oh, there were so many. I mean, it's hard not to say Ricketts, but also Jumbo. Jumbo was so sweet, especially as just like a rando NPC that we just kind of adopted for the rest of the campaign. Yeah. I loved Cam. He was just yeah. so, he was just so like innocent and, and sweet and good hearted. And just the moment that he cocked his little bat head to the side and was like, you got to get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just won my heart. <laughs> it's hard for me not to say bad guys too, though, because Dion <laughs> gave me Ugh. like Dion reactions sucks. that I've yeah. not had in this whole run of the game. Um, so that that always stands out to me too. Uh, I also loved the little boy in Starhold, Arky. Oh, Arky, was that his yeah. Name? Oh, he was so cute. Yeah, I actually, I just got asked a question about him on TikTok. Oh, nice. Yeah. Carrington is very good. Oh, oh yes. God. Stress. Our clones. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> High five short, clone number short two. Lived clones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, not Jake. Oh, yeah. Is, is, is right <laughs> okay, okay, I was just like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. <laughs> is, not Jake. Is right at the end of that season, uh, of season five, and just the interactions between the two of them. It's yeah. just like a living Spider-Man meme. Of <laughs> <laughs> you you saying something and then leaning away from the microphone and going, I'm trying to be you. Is it going? This is I'm so like, this is good. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're doing a great job. Which I think was really cool, but I also really would have loved just the Jake show and like to hear Jake be himself in a different version of yeah. himself. Like that was really great. Uh, it, the clones and Starhold. But like to have it be that whole like I don't know who you are thing. Well, and honestly, I didn't do that this time because I knew what not Jake was. Right. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to like this is a clone of of Jake. It it wasn't literally a me. Yeah. It was just yeah. a yeah. presenting but no, I, as me. I don't disagree. I had that thought of like, does Jake voice this or do I? Oh, that, it becomes <laughs> a lot more work. Yeah. Uh, I also really liked Kima. Was really cool. Oh, it was. Yeah. It, it was so neat after like. Like we had established that like there are, there are a bunch of Kims in all of the worlds and that I'm I can check in with all of them, but this was the first time I ever got to actually meet one of them, yeah. which was really cool. Um, I'm starting to take it personal, uh, just so you're aware. That is the chunk that replaced Baba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yep. Well, thank you. I don't know if it counts as like a new NPC, but like getting to meet Pirate World Siobhan and have that mm. like Aww. sort of reunion for Megan was. Yeah. Really, really great. The Buckleys. I hated oh, them. Oh, that was good. It's God, yeah. No. It's a good was... show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we should listen to we it. We should listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we're at our last question. All right. Which game variation is each player's fave and which character variation as well? Um, for me, I mean Starhold is so well done and so well put together and like i'm i'm a, already a huge fan of horror genre and but i'm not i'm not a big fan of just straight sci-fi but sci-fi horror is the best like alien predator the thing like these are some of my favorite franchises i've seen these movies hundreds of times i love them with my whole heart so being able to be in that is so satisfying um that said I just felt I, I'm really happy despite getting um, outright killed. I was really happy with playing the gunslinger uh, in Cowboy World. So playing that variation um, was was really nice. Um, I felt more useful than I have <laughs> in many other things in a long time. Uh, I think my vote for favorite game would also go to Starhold. But my my favorite character variation is is Rapscallion because getting to play a talking monkey. <laughs> <is quite laughs> Uh, my favorite world we went to this season was also Starhold. It was so fun. It was so stressful. I think it might have been my favorite because I knew we were only going to be there for a limited amount of time. Like if I was just doing like 
80 episodes in Starhold, I think my character would have a panic attack. Sure. Uh, so the fact that I knew that eventually we would get to leave uh, made it easier to sort of deal with the very tense situation that Starhold was, but it was really fun to play. I love that system. My favorite character variation is Swashbuckler Kim. It was super fun to play, and I'm rarely in a situation just from like characters that I typically build and who I've played on coin thus far. It's very seldom that if a Kim is in a fight, she's usually really trying not to get in the middle of it. <laughs> like she's usually trying to get like as far away from possible and be like, how can I best support what other people are doing? And it was fun for a change to play a character that was like, nah, man, I'm just going to jump in there and start doing really cool stuff. Yeah, that was dope. <laughs> I was a very capable fighter for once. I really loved the feeling of Starhold. I loved the environment of Cowboy World. And I love being able to be a mermaid <laughs> in Rap Stallion. So those three? Yeah, I'd say those nice. three. Nice. That's yeah. good. good. Good three to pick from the selection. Technically, you can be a mermaid anywhere. <laughs> that's yeah, true. but only one of those is a majority water. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's I don't know which Megan I like the most. I feel like I didn't stray too far from what I usually do. But being like the kind of engineer in Starhold was really fun to kind of focus more on like the the mechanic side of things, even though like mechanics was my focus in Cowboy World. I used it in kind of a I'm going to create things as opposed to Starhold where it was like, I'm here to fix things that already exist. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think Starhold, too, just because like Starhold reawakened a love of running games that I didn't know was kind of being dulled by the volume of stuff that we make. There's just something about that style that I've never done. I was like, I really enjoy this. And so I I just found myself loving every time we hit record in that world because I was excited to see how you're going to deal with the things that I knew had been laid there as traps for all of you. Sure. That's such a jigsaw thing to say. Right. <laughs> uh, I was so excited for you to to deal with all of the yeah. traps that I laid for you. <laughs> uh, and my favorite variation was uh, Seth Dales. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I just, that was so, uh, he was so unsettling and so calm, so the opposite of the coche that we have seen before. And then just to know that, like, yeah, they keep they keep trying to kill him for his crimes, and he just keeps coming back. It's like, oh. Yeah. Now, I took this question, as I think all of us did, to mean the favorite variation of yourself that you played. So were you Seth Dales the whole time? I Was this the secret Rev? Rev was the bad guy the whole time I, that I'll we talked honest, about? I'll be honest. When I read this question, I just took character for like anyone no. that we've seen a second version of. That, oh, that that's sense. fair. I didn't think about it like yeah, that. No, what, what you said makes perfect sense. I just like that idea that yeah. you were secretly, you had, also an, me. you had Nash in you the whole time. Somehow. You were secretly <laughs> Seth Dales. I, it's just, it's really interesting to just look, look back on it and think back on it because like, you know, I, I always chase that heart pounding feeling that like a little bit of adrenaline rush and horror stuff does that to me. That's why I love, you know, Dead by Daylight and scary games and all these horror movies and stuff. So like just that, scramble that panic in that world is so interesting to me but i'm i don't know i just felt like we really hit a group stride in cowboy world with just our interactions together and with jake's npcs and just the way we set everything up and and you know attacked everything or approached every situation um it just felt like there were several moments where i'm like this all just feels like there's no other way this could or should go, you know, win, lose or fail, you know, any, any mix of how it went, it just felt exactly right. And that's so satisfying to like walk away from the table uh, after those moments as well. Um, to your point though, about like Starhold and horror and like getting the adrenaline pumping. One of the things that I loved so much about that is like, the non-negotiable forward progress like in, <laughs> in other game worlds we can stop and think and get stuck on how we should handle things i liked how much rev had us and part as just how the game's designed but part yeah. is rev, rev having his fucking jigsaw set of puzzles <laughs> he wanted to put us through i'm just like we have to keep doing stuff yeah like we can't just <laughs> chill and think and get lost and get stuck on a puzzle piece we're going to die. Yeah. We have to move forward. If you sit <laughs> yeah. still, this organism is going to keep eating the spaceship that you're in. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In that, I just love that element of that game of like, 
Space is pressure. This game should be pressure. It's like, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of our Q&A for Season 5. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for listening and for submitting your questions. As a little bonus, hang around in just a second to hear all of the wonderful outtakes from Season (laughs) 5. Oh, no. And then we'll see you next week for the beginning of Season 6. Woo! Woo! Jake, you're fire damage. <laughs> you said Jake, you're fired. <laughs> Jake, you're fired. Jake, you're fired damage. How much was that? How much was it? Yeah. Five, five. Jake, thank you. You're excused. <laughs> just just <laughs> quietly and in the midst of everything. Jake, you're fired. I'm just like, take my headphones off. We just hear the sound of him <laughs> emptying his it. locker. Fair, fair. That's fair. <laughs> I, I deserve that. Out of curiosity, what? No? Okay. <laughs> Jack, uh, no, uh, Indiana is a at-will state. He doesn't have to give a reason <laughs> for why. <laughs> what did you roll? Did you tell me your total? Kick some ass? Yeah. A 10? And you asked me what my extra oh, effect was. Yeah. He was too busy daydreaming about firing Jake. <laughs> <laughs> torture is real persistent. <laughs> Could we, like, tickle him? Like a torture? Just he torturous. Can't, can't handle it. I think that might be, like, a fetish thing. I did cut the fetishizer out of the list of gods at the last second. Oh. <laughs> Shame. S- sort of it's just kind of floating in the ether wow. as a half-formed idea is the fetishizer. Yeah. I thought that was one of the guns from Men in Black. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> sounds like a robot. <laughs> I think I have one of those in my bedside drawer. <laughs> um, so all of you just give me just a couple of just sounds of whatever you think it might sound like as you're changing inside of the, the tunnel. As you're... What? As, <laughs> as, as you're... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Never mind. I, 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 I regret this instantly. <laughs> if you all give me the sounds of what seems like you coming, I'm going to use them against you in the future. <laughs> you can't scare me, bro. Do we think he goes away when the sun comes up? I uh, look at Ricketts. In the stories about this guy, is he ever seen during the day? No. He's a bedtime story. He only exists at night. I thought you were going to say, he's a bedtime boy. <laughs> he get real sleepy. <laughs> Sing him a tune. Lights out. He's all tuckered out. Yeah, if we can disperse him, I would imagine he'd reform back in Bronze Chapel. So it'd take him a while to get back here, right? That's what happened to Christopher Walken. Yes! <laughs> Because he would, like, the vagina tree, like, he would fly what? out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There was the tree, and its roots were all meaty, and he would be birthed a... out of it on <sighs> the horse. Yeah, it's oh, a God. it's a portal to hell. The yeah. horse comes straight out of it. Yes, yes, I do remember that. We're really earning the explicit tag on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I hadn't said meaty. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had said mini. Vagina tree is fine, but I really wish I hadn't said meaty. <laughs> Rickett says, I also wish you hadn't said meaty. <laughs> You are all standing in the churchyard. The church, I think, is probably still on fire. Mm, Do I want to let the blessed rains also put out the burning church? I think that's very symbolic. Yeah. The rain puts out the... I should say that more narratively. (laughs) (laughs) That that Uh, was the most us-ass shit. This all stays in. (laughs) Oh, shit. That's funny. Well, Brev, do you have any desire to go do a little recon? I guess it depends on what plan we pick with the train, because if it's like some kind of magic thing, I can help with that. But if it's some engineering thing, then yeah, I suppose that I would be the one that Nash would not have DNA evidence of previous encounters, except for that one time he and I had... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, he's got my DNA. <laughs> uh, he was inside my body for the better part of a season. Um, That's how I spend every season. You don't see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell Cruz. Keep going until you see Tass, but stop before you get to Tass. He lifts up a hand to wave and the train gets moving. Thanks, Cruz. Tass, your laziness has paid off. You didn't have to make the short ride back to the train. Nice. The train instead comes to you and comes to a halt harmlessly on the rails. We see Cruz's metallic eyebrows just tilt down <laughs> as they Guns see Tass on the, on the rail. <laughs> he puts more fire into the engine. He puts his animatronic hands together and rubs them menacingly. <laughs> oh, no. 
uh, I think I legitimately start spiraling a bit as Weir turned away and I whisper to Rev, it occurs to me in this moment that if we go into town and stir up a wasp nest and we have to ride out of town to get to our train, we're going to have to drive back through the wasp nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Also, did you hear that voice in the sky ask me if I was going to murk these two people off the edge of this cliff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, we got to get you out of this world as soon as possible. We need to get Rev out of this heat. <laughs> He's hearing voices. <laughs> Did you smelling smell the stuff? voice too? <laughs> <laughs> He's smelling things. He's hearing voices in the sky. <laughs> That's one of my starting skills I took was the fourth wall. <laughs> I just sometimes hear the game master. <laughs> All right. I will stand up and offer to shake his hand. It's just got a death touch. Death touch. Just... <laughs> <laughs> if only there were saving throws in this game. <laughs> That's a series wrap on Rev to Shane. There we go. <laughs> so she's like, got him. Got him. False word every time. <laughs> oh, the old, in the every old world. gentleman act. In every world. <laughs> the four of you, plus your two new companions, are out to explore the bustling settlement slash so sorry. It's been, it's been a million years. <laughs> Jake started and I heard nothing but Just Rev like... starting to crackle dice. Yeah, and then the phone dice. went off. The four of you. Oh, my God. <laughs> sorry. Oh, Jesus. I'm so sorry. It's fine, because if you kill everybody, <laughs> then I don't have to deal with it anymore. So we can go home? Yeah. Oh, shit. You'll go oh. to your final home, your final resting place. You go to your forever you'll home. Go, you're go, you'll go home to meet your that savior. That sounds nice. Ugh. <laughs> I don't fucking trust you. I shouldn't have looked over at you. Oh, God damn it. I was fine. And I'm, like, I'm looking straight ahead. Okay, Ooh. I'll look down. You all hear a series of shots ring out as Sharpshot runs down the roof of the church, just firing indiscriminately at the horsemen, as if trying to lay down cover for all of you. And uh, he just kind of drops and slides off the roof and lands on his feet in the dirt and takes cover around the corner of one of the buildings. Megan, you can see that he is taking up position fairly close to you, and you hear him, Hey, you all right? God, I thought you meant the horseman. Holy shit. Boo! <laughs> the horse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nay! <laughs> Oats. Can I get your horse's number? <laughs> Yo, that horse is blue. I like it. <laughs> so, who do you want to start with? I mean, Adolin was the one that got shot first, so I have to assume that she's the worst off. Okay. Uh, give me a medical roll. Okay. Six. On a six or less, the patient dies. Oh no! No. Fuck. So you are working on Adolin trying to get this holy bullet out of her, and it's been too long. She is not able to recover from the wound, and she doesn't make it. I, I think it, it looks for a moment like, like I'm about to just shut down. Like, I mean, this, that, that, that's not good. Like, I can't, oof, that's rough. Um, so, like, there's this moment of me just leaning there for a second, and then I, ha I snap. I snap to it because it might happen again if I wait too long. Okay. Well, Tass, first of all, take a grit for failing that roll. Yeah. Take another grit for defeating an enemy. <laughs> 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 I would like to apologize because I played it back in my head when I told you, like, oh, yeah, just tell him. I waved at you very regally. <laughs> I was like, just tell him. <laughs> well, I didn't notice it, but totally, now I'm pissed. Totally unintentional. It was just the way my I'm just, just tell him. Tell him what you tell him what you want. Tell dear. him what, tell him what you told me. <laughs> I love it when Rev kind of adopts this sort of like regal old biddy persona. <laughs> Rev occasionally becomes just like the Dowager Deshane. As you are attached to the tail of this thing, looking around trying to find a vulnerable spot, you can see that just every now and then that intermittent drip from the very tip of its stinger. And looking up at the stinger. You see that when it drips, it is because there's an opening there. I'm trying, I'm really trying to tiptoe around how to describe this. 
cloaca. That's the only word I can think of, and I'm trying so hard not to use it. The only other time in this show where we've discussed cloacas, Jake was also the one who introduced it. Is there a reason why that's usually on your mind? He Jacob? says it so often. <laughs> <laughs> There's a subreddit called Am I the Cloaca? And it's Am I the Asshole, but fictional bird scenarios. <laughs> so, anyway, the poison cloaca is dilating. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard Rev talk about like <laughs> cloacas, cloacas all the time. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, we're basically an expert on. We're never point. getting away from this. <laughs> I'm dying over here. <laughs> I, t- I am too. <laughs> uh, I want to pull out my lasso and see if using that I can try to. Even if I fuck up the timing, maybe at least I can like gym class rope climb my way up onto a leg. Fuck yeah. Okay, give me a rope roll. That's a four. Oh, no. Kim gets taken out by a scorpion after how many times she's talked about all of the deadly scorpions in Arizona, the time we recorded where she literally got bit by one of the most deadly (laughs) scorpions. It was always meant to go out this way. This is their poetic justice. We couldn't get you in real life. (laughs) So so we had to do it in fiction. The uh, big scorpion came to me and offered me a lot of money (laughs) in a dream, in a a vision. Do you mean big scorpion like as in big pharma? Yes. (laughs) scorpion industry (laughs) Tass you run over to the head uh, and you just start unloading both barrels and this thing lets out a bizarre sound like a cross between a hiss and like like steam escaping almost it's like a different kind of hiss like a hiss and a hiss yeah thanks (laughs) (laughs) I'm looking for the absence of anger or irritation like the task that I know carries that and he's a, he's afraid of it. But when there are moments that someone is in need, especially in a situation like that, something they don't have any control over, it's gone. This is like the opposite of a roast today. <laughs> I'm taking this worse. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I had a feeling that you would. This is payback for that time we played Clue on stream and, and you, you just said, said the nicest things fucking things about, about, <laughs> about me and Kim and like just had us crying on the stream. <laughs> you called us smart, talented, beautiful women. Hilarious. He said hilarious yeah. at some point in there. I remember that. Yeah. Suck it, idiot. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, this is your payback. I needed that. This is what you get. This has been the long revenge. I've been plotting this forever. <laughs> He's been planning to honey roast you for years. <laughs> <laughs> this is the welcome to the honey roast. <laughs> Uh, Yeah, while they're talking, like, magic theory, I'm off to the side still just, like, stretching my fingers and, like, trying drawing my gun and just still still just figuring out my body here. Yeah, I mean... Discovering your body. (laughs) Yeah. Stop in a dark Should we leave you alone? (laughs) (laughs) No. No, I I like like an audience. (laughs) Oh, if you'd like us to watch, then happy to do that. I just, you know, just figuring it out. I'm calling HR. (laughs) (laughs) I've lost control. (laughs) Harvey? Yeah, get in here. Get in here. He hasn't been in in years. <laughs> That's why everything's gone to shit yeah. ever since we moved out of my house. <laughs> you sick bastards. <laughs> Maybe the scuttler's nice now that it's not being influenced by corruptive ley line energy. One could hope. <laughs> hey, guys. Good to see you. Sorry about that tiff we got into earlier. <laughs> Hop on. Hop on. I'm happy to take you anywhere you want to go. I but now that I've there's no corruption, that was very similar. <laughs> to that. Have you ever heard of the scorpion and the frog? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't know what to do because I don't think I can get close to him without getting killed. Can you get to Megan and make sure she's okay? Yeah, if you can distract him. Uh... Or I guess somebody distract him. I think if he looks at me, I'm not going to make it. Okay, hun, you you're fine. One, two, three, go. He starts running. Okay, and I want to put an image in the stranger's mind of Jumbo running the other way. Fuck, I don't want to do Jumbo that dirty, but <laughs> goddamn, would it be hilarious <laughs> if he starts running and just 
just one <laughs> one nonchalant bullet. Listen, he made it this Jesus far. Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck. I can't tell where you're going with that. Is <laughs> should he like, die or should <laughs> he live? Yeah. yeah, he made it this far. Obviously, he's got he's got this stuff to make it, or he's made it this far. That's far enough. Yeah. We could just introduce him to Trog, and he could just, you know, hang out in the tavern, and I think that's a great life for him. Two big boys. Yeah, yeah. Two That's big the boys. new name of the tavern. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the podcast they do from the tavern. <laughs> Should we call it Hello from the Magic Tavern? No, I think that's taken. <laughs> Let's just call it Two Big Boys. Two Big Boys. Well, okay, mix the ideas here. We cannibalize the rest of the cars to form onto the engine to make it some sort of crawler that can go over or through, so we keep all of the parts, but it's in one single contained unit. Hmm. And then just when it comes back through the portal, there's the car's kind of inside out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it's all there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is basically, I'm just going to make like a big Boltron. <laughs> like, yeah. Each one, <laughs> each one of the car, yeah, is, each one of the cars a is a leg. It's, it's going to be a mech. Are you mech. trying to sell us on this less? No, I'm saying, I think that <laughs> if that is our plan, that is the only option. <laughs> the boxes you all put yourselves in is hilarious. <laughs> that Voltron is the only option. <laughs> it's all we can do. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow.